Hello my dear friends, here is Padna again with a brand new episode of Minna and this one is titled Minna Gets Trapped in the Forest. It's going to be quite an adventure for Minna this time. Let's find out what happens in her life. Okay, so early one morning, Minna woke up to the sound of a motorbike and someone calling out, Dr. Saar, Dr. Saar. Minna's tata was known in the village as doctor because he was the only veterinary doctor there. And so very curious, Minna ran downstairs to see what's happening. Tata opened the gate and there he saw Anwar Bhai on the motorbike. So he asked, Anwar Bhai, what brings you here so early in the morning? And then Minna noticed that the, there was a man sitting on the bike. He must have been Anwar Bhai and there was a small boy sitting behind him. And in between them on the seat was a large goat and it was bleeding and the goat seemed to be unconscious. Minna's eyes widened with shock and then Tata rushed and both Tata and the boy lifted the unconscious goat and carried it to the clinic that was in the backyard. Minna silently followed them to see what was going to happen. Tata then asked Salim, Salim, what happened to your goat? Poor Salim, he was nearly in tears. He said, Sir, I was taking all my goats for grazing this morning and as we were crossing the road, a bus came and hit uh, my goat and then she fell unconscious and she's also bleeding. Tata said, patted him and said, let me take care of this. And he cleaned her wounds and then he dressed the wound and then he told Salim, looks like she's fractured her hind leg. So I'm going to put a cast on her leg and don't you worry, Salim, she's going to be fine. So here is the painting that I've done. See, can you see that Anwar and Salim are there on the motorbike bringing the goat? And then here's the goat in the table of the clinic. She's unconscious and then the doctor has put her on some drips. And so Salim was relieved to hear that his goat is going to be all right. But then his dad Anwar came and said, Dr. Sir, we have to leave immediately because we have left all the other goats in the hills all by themselves. They're there grazing. And so they left. And Mina felt so proud of her Tata because he was not afraid of blood and he took such good care of all the animals. And later that afternoon, once again, they heard from the gate, Dr. Saar, Dr. Saar. Minna feared that it is it going to be yet another animal, a wounded animal, and she ran to find out who it was. And then she saw there was Salim holding a little kid in his hands. It was white in color and it went, It wriggled and it tried to get away from Salim's arms. Minna had never seen such a cute baby goat in her life. And then Salim said, Dr. Saad, how is Badki, my goat? He asked. Then Tata said, oh, she's much better. She even ate the grass and vegetables that we fed her. And she, But she won't be about, able to stand up now because I put her uh, leg on a cast. And why have you brought this little kid here, Salim? Tata asked. Salim said, Dr. Saar, this is Badki's baby. She was crying to see her mother, so I brought her. So Tata and Salim uh, took the kid to the clinic and they kept her near Badki, the mother goat. And upon seeing the baby goat, Badki bleated in joy. She said. And then the baby goat jumped all around and snuggled close to his mother. And the, but the mother, mother goat could not feed the baby as she was hurt. Then Tata immediately went and brought a small feeding bottle and he put some formula milk in it and he instructed Salim how to feed the hungry kid. And Minna watched with fascination as the kid quickly drank up all the milk. And then Tata told Salim, why don't you leave the baby goat, the kid here? Because she's still not weaned off the mother's milk and we will bottle feed her for one day or two days. And then once the mama goat is fine, she will be fit to feed the kid herself. So Salim agreed and he said, uh, Dr. Sir, I'll come in the morning tomorrow again to visit. But just before Salim went, Tati insisted, Salim, wait, you've come all the way from your house. So you wait here, let me get you some snacks to eat. So Salim waited and soon Minna and Salim became friends and Minna asked Salim, uh, what's the name of the baby goat? She asked. Then Salim said, the mother goat's name is Badki and the baby's name is Chutki. Then Salim asked, uh, but I've not seen you here before. Who are you? He asked. Then Minna said, my name is Minna 
and Dr. Sar is my granddad and I study in the fourth standard. Which standard do you study, Salim? She asked. And then Salim said, I study in the fifth standard. Then Mina asked, oh, so you bunked school today? Then Salim said, no, I take the goats for grazing early in the morning every day and I stay with the goats in the hills. And then at around 10 o'clock, either my grandmother or my sister will come there with my lunchbox. And then I leave the goats with them and then I walk from there to my school. My school is very far. So, and so it starts only at 11 o'clock. And then I reach home sometimes at 4 or sometimes at 5. It gets very late by the time I reach home. He said. Then Mina said, you walk all the way, all that distance every day to school? She asked. And then he said, no, some days I'm lucky because I get some farmer's bullock cart that goes towards the town. So I get a lift and some days there's a village bus and then I get to ride in the village bus. And then soon the snacks arrived. Tati gave Salim and Salim ate the snacks and then he kissed Badki and the baby goat goodbye. And he said, I'll come tomorrow, please take care of my goats. And then Mina said, of course, Salim, I'll take good care of Barki and Chupki. Don't you worry, she said. And then Chupki was a very naughty kid. And just after she drank the milk, she was bouncier than ever. She leaped and jumped from place to place like a rubber ball. And then she was on top of the car and then on top of the bicycle. And then she jumped on the cow shed and then on the haystack. And then she was up and down the stairs. She was bounding. And then she followed Mina into the house. And inside the house, she leapt on the chairs and bounded on the tables and jumped on the bed and bounced on the sofa. She loved to play butt butt. And you know, she'll come jumping sideways like this and then she'll try to butt Minna. Even though Min, the Chutki didn't have any horns, she pretended as, as if she was some big butt, butting champion. And Minna was taken aback by Chutki's fearless leaps. She had just leaped like that without looking anywhere. So she asked the kid, Chutki, how is it that you're able to jump without any fear? So... When Minna asked her the question, Chuki thought it's best to give her a demo and she did this little tottering dance. Let's watch what she did. Put your left foot out, put your right foot out, shake your little head and twirl all around. Don't look forward, don't look backward, then you just leap about. Put your little tongue out, move your ears up and down, shake your little head and twirl all around. Bleak little Minna, say ba 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 ba. That's what it's all about. So, did you like that song? So, early next morning, Salim came back to check on Barki and Chutki. He was delighted to see that Barki was trying to slowly limp, but Chutki was all over the place bleating and running and doing all sorts of acrobatics. Minna joined Salim and they both played with Chutki for some time. But then Salim had to leave for school. He was getting late. He said he'll visit them again next morning. And Tata told that Baki would be better next week. She was already getting much better than how she was. So during the day, Minna always had to take care of Chutki, the baby goat, because she disturbed the mother goat. She was a nuisance to the pigs and the chickens. And when other people came with their animals for a checkup, she would go and disturb them too. So Mina had a tough time teaching Chutki how to sit still. And the only thing that kept Chutki still even for some time was the TV. And Chutki loved to watch Cartoon Network. And so everyone, when they wanted some peas in the house, they would plonk Chutki in front of the TV on her favorite chair. And Chutki would happily gaze on till she suddenly remembered that she was either hungry or she remembered to be naughty again. So one afternoon, Mina set Chutki in front of the TV and she went out to help grandma hang out all the washed clothes on the clothesline. 
When she returned, the TV was still on, but Chutki was not in the living room. So Mina called out, Chutki, Chutki, but there was no response. And then Tati also called out, but there was absolute silence. So Mina and Tati went looking for Chutki in every single room, but nowhere to be found. So Tati went to the backyard, into the clinic, and to where Badki, the mother goat, was. But Chutki was not even there. So Mina went upstairs and she even looked inside the bathroom, but no Chutki. Where could Chutki have vanished in just 10 minutes, Mina thought. And then Mina went looking for her in the front garden. And she called out, Chutki, Chutki. No response. Then Mina opened the front gate and she went looking for her in the road. And then she even asked some passers by, Hello, have you seen a small white kid? And then an old woman who was passing by told Mina, Yeah, I saw a white baby goat slide through that gate. And uh, she was being chased by some stray dogs. And I think they went there towards the hills, you know, the forest area. Mina felt terrified. What? I have promised Salim that I'll take good care of Chutki, but I never imagined that Chutki would run away from home. So Mina went back home. She took her bicycle and she rode along the narrow, muddy footpath that led towards the hill and, and the forest. The goat grazers often took that shortcut to get to the grassy glades that lay inside the forest, you know. So and on either side of the path that she was riding were thorny bushes and wild weeds. Mina called out as she rode, Chutki, Chutki, but no response and Mina had no idea where she was going or for how long she had been riding also. And then soon after some time, the path came to an end. Then started thick bushes and shrubs all around. It blocked her way and she couldn't ride on her bicycle any further. So she was not sure what to do whether to go ahead or to get back home. That's when she suddenly heard a couple of barks and a sharp bleep. <coughs> and she knew that Chutki was somewhere close by. And so <coughs> Mina got off her bicycle and not minding the shrubs and the thorny bushes, she walked ahead calling out to Chutki. Chutki, she called. And Minya, Minna somehow knew that she was heading in the right direction because she was hearing some more barks and bleats. And there were more and more trees and the shrubs grew denser and thicker as she walked along inside the forest. But then Minna could see that a short distance away, there was a clearing in the forest. And she headed in that direction. And when Minna shuffled her way into the small clearing, she was alarmed to see that there were two big dogs trying to reach Chutki. Chutki was perched precariously on a tree branch just out of reach of the dogs and she was bleating pitifully. <laughs> she said. Mina only had a split second to decide what to do because if the dogs saw her first then they would come charging at her. So she bent down and she picked up a huge broken branch of a tree that you know was buried inside the uh, the dry leaves. She picked it up and then with an enormous scream, Aah! she said and she tore towards the dogs with a huge branch on her hands. And the dogs, when they saw that there was a huge, big noise and a tree or branch coming to attack them, the dogs felt scared and they scampered away. But Mina knew that the dogs could come back. So she had only a few minutes to climb up and rescue Chutki. So Mina tried to climb the tree, she tried to grip the branch, put her foot on one of the broken tree branches, but then she slipped. She tried again, again she slipped, and then she tried for the third time, and that's when she heard a terrifying growl from behind her. Okay, the noise. Mina slowly turned, and she had her heart in her mouth when she knew, when she saw that there were the two dogs that had come back now to attack Mina. And Chutki from up on the branch bleated pitifully, realizing the trouble that Minna was in. She said. And now the dogs were just a few feet away. And if Minna showed even the slightest signs of fear, they would attack her mercilessly. So Minna didn't know what to do. She looked at Chutki, who seemed to be encouraging her to leap up. And then Minna, within a split second, got off her feet and stepped onto a jutting broken branch and hoisted herself up. She could feel one of the dogs 
tugging and pulling at her shoes. <laughs> it was biting and pulling off her shoes. But then she had no time to lose. She almost lost her grip, but then she held on tight to the branch and with all her strength, she pulled herself up. By then, the dog had torn off her shoes and the other dog also came and the, both the dogs, they attacked the shoes and they tore it to pieces. But by now, Minna had somehow managed to climb up on the branch and sit up there. Now, see, this is what happened. Can you see? Minna is hanging on to her dear life while the dogs are trying to attack her. And in the meanwhile, Minna somehow had managed to get up and also to get Chutki and held her close. Minna whispered to Chutki, don't worry, I won't let anyone harm you. And as though understanding what Minna had said, Chutki buttered her head near uh, against Minna and snuggled close to Minna. And both the dogs soon got tired of tearing up the shoe and then started growling and barking up at the branch trying to get at Minna and Chutki who were now safely high up on a branch and the dogs could not reach them. Minna suddenly heard a clap of thunder and she realized that it was going to rain. Minna somehow held on and sat on the branch even though it had started raining very heavily now. And once it started raining, the dogs gave up their chase and they ran back home. And now it was all alone. Minna with Chutki sitting on the branch of the tree and she heard terrible noises. The rain was raining and there were some insect sounds. She didn't All sorts of weird noises but then Minna sat there tightly holding on to uh, Chutki not giving up hope and in the meanwhile the news of Minna riding off on her bicycle towards the village for forest had reached all the villagers. Tata along with a few men set off towards the forest in search of Minna and when they tracked her down and they saw that the on the muddy path they found her bicycle abandoned over there. They realized that Mina must have surely taken uh, to the forest by foot. So they tracked her by telltale signs of broken twigs and trampled foliage. They helped, they kept on tracking and they called out, Minna! Minna! But all the sounds got blocked because of the howling winds and the sounds and the, and the insect sounds. Mina sat on while Chutki peacefully dozed off in uh, Mina's arms. But Mina kept vigil and she was praying to God that there were no, there were going to be no wild animals coming chasing her that night. And then after some time, in the middle of the, it was very dark now. Suddenly, Mina's ears picked up some kind of a noise. Was she dreaming? Did she really hear someone call out her name, Mina? Did she hear that? She waited with bated breath, and then. Clearly, she could hear her name being called once again, Minna. And now the sound was coming from somewhere close by. And she knew that that was her tata's voice. And then there was utter silence. And then the voice again called out. So now Minna said, Tata, she called out. And then Tata heard her voice and he said, Minna, where are you? Keep calling out to us. We'll come and reach, reach you. And Chukke also joined in to say, so that was the time when both Mina and Chuki sat up on the tree and when suddenly Katata's people came, shone the torch and see they found Minna holding Chuki sitting in the dark on the branch of the tree. So they ultimately found her and then they said, Tata picked her up and said, Minna, where did you go? We were so terrified. Don't you know that it's dangerous to come into the forest all by yourself? 
And then Minna said, Tata, I came to rescue Chupki. She was being chased by the two dogs. I somehow managed to save her. And then they all got back home and there was a big celebration. Salim was there too. He said, Minna, you're such a brave girl. I would not dare to go into the forest in the dark, you know. Were you not frightened? He asked him. And then Minna said, yeah, I was a bit frightened. But then once the dogs ran away, I was cool because I was sure that I could find my way back in the morning. All I had to do was stay put in the dark on the tree branch. And Chutki was there with me all the time to give me company. And then Salim said, oh, it was all because of this Chutki. She's a very, very naughty kid. And I think you should keep her on the leash now. And then Mina said, yes, it looks like it. And then that night, Mina got to tell her parents on the phone uh, about all about her adventures. And her parents were a little worried about hearing that she was almost lost. And then Mina's dad asked her, promise me, Mina, that you won't go alone into the forest ever again. Mina said, but I was not alone, Appa. I went with Chutki. I had her for company. And then... Minna's dad asked her, okay, so now what will you become when you grow big? So what do you think Minna responded? Hmm? Did she say that she'll be a... Uh, yes, she said, I want to become a forest ranger when I grow up, she said. So that is the end of today's Minna's adventure. Um, wait for more adventures uh, that Mina is going to have in the next episode. So bye until next time. This is Padma signing off. Bye.